Hello, listeners, and welcome back. My name is Stephanie Safarian, and you're listening to episode 292 of Sustainable Minimalists, a twice-weekly show about intentional and eco-minimalist living. On today's show, I am answering a listener's question about minimalist cell phones. Angela wrote to me and asked me to do a product review of the Wise Phone by a company called Techless. Now, the Wise Phone markets itself as a, and I quote, a pure and simple phone designed to cut out unnecessary distractions like social media and advertisements with calling, texting, and a few simple tools. And so today we're talking about it. According to the Chicago-based research firm Dscout, the average smartphone user touches their phone 2,617 times per day. Imagine if instead of touching our phone 2,617 times a day, we hugged our children that many times per day. And of course, it comes as a surprise to nobody. Plenty of studies have found that phone usage, especially excessive phone usage, negatively impacts our mental health as well as our quality of life. So could a minimalist phone be right for you? Today's show is a show of threes. In part one, I'm giving you three reasons why you may want to consider a minimalist phone or a dumb phone, if you will. Part two is three benefits to that dumb phone and particularly with a nod to the wise phone. And in part three of today's show, I'm giving you three drawbacks that I see to minimalist phones and the Wise Phone in particular. Now, as always with these product reviews, I am not getting paid for this review, and my opinions are completely 100% my own. There are two ad breaks because today is a longer show. And while I certainly invite you to listen to the ads because I only partner with brands that I use and love, please know you can skip ahead if that's something that feels right for you. Let's get right into the three reasons why you might consider a minimalist phone. So part one of today's show, I will never forget the moment when the masses adopted smartphones. For a period of time, right, the smartphone was only for the super important business professional. Do you remember the BlackBerry with the QWERTY keyboard? We all just hopped on the bandwagon of inserting this incredibly powerful piece of technology into our lives. We added them into our pockets and into our handbags and onto that little clip on our belt buckle like an appendage. And with the rollout of smartphones, we all instantly received access to the internet 24 hours a day, seven days a week, wherever we were in the world, as long as there was internet. BlackBerry released its email-only device in 1999, so email-only, no phone involved. But in 2002, BlackBerry released the email with the full keyboard and the ability to make calls. I did have one of those, and I was, what, 20-something years old? I did not not need such a powerful phone at age 20. And then in 2007, you know what happened. The first iPhone was released. And in 2008, the first App Store came to be. And with the first App Store, that was a really big deal because thanks to the App Store, that enabled all of us to customize the software that was on our smartphones, making it a truly smart, truly customizable, truly personalized device. Now, I did read the Steve Jobs biography by Walter Isaacson, and I will never forget the moment that I read that Jobs really didn't let his own children use his own creations, the iPhone, the iPad, and technology in general, because Steve Jobs understood the inherent risks associated with enabling unfettered use of such powerful technology. The wise phone from Techless takes a similar approach to Steve Jobs with his own children. Let's reverse and restrict access to such powerful technology so that we can take back our lives. So three reasons why you may want to consider a simple phone, a dumb phone. Reason number one is that our data is used and our data is exploited. It's no surprise. Businesses place great value on the data they collect about us, their customers. 
because this information enables them to send out the targeted advertisements that we all see. The data enables companies to predict sales trends. It enables them to improve their products. But it goes much further than that, because in the United States, especially, the companies and the platforms that you interact with own your data. This means that they can legally sell your data to data brokers. Now, what on earth is a data broker? A data broker is a company that buys and sells data sets from a wide range of sources, including location data when you're using Google Maps and from many cell phone carriers. So what does a data broker do? A data broker combines data, your data, from all these different sources and creates a detailed profile on you, which they then sell that data profile to other companies. Now, Maybe you're thinking to yourself, what the? No, this doesn't happen. Oh, yes, it does. Employers use your data set to make decisions about whether they should interview you for a job to predict whether if they hire you, you're going to quit within five years. Police departments use data sets to make lists of people who may be likely to commit violent crimes. Some companies even use your data to predict whether or not you're going to take your prescription medication. And the worst thing of all is that most of us don't even know that any of this happens. Studies do find that people who use Google search, Google, People know that Google collects data about their search history, and Facebook users know that Facebook collects data about who their friends are. But the same people don't know and understand that whatever they like on Facebook and whatever they search for on Google can be accurately used to predict your political party, to predict your sexual orientation, to predict what you are likely to do in the future. As of right now, as of this moment in time, You have to manage your own digital privacy. And that is a difficult, if not impossible, task because all those privacy policies, all those opt-ins you have to either sign or click that you agree, they're really darn difficult to understand. And that's even if you bother trying to read them. How many of us just click opt-in and go on with our merry business because who has time to read that document, right? What I'm trying to say here is that if you are not concerned about your data privacy, your digital privacy, you should be. And if you don't even know where to begin or how to begin managing your privacy online, a good place to start is by stepping away from all of the internet's privacy opt-in. So just take a step back, opt-in to less. That is a practical place to start. So that's reason number one why you may want to consider a minimalist phone. It naturally, it forces you to take that step back. Reason number two why a minimalist phone might be right for you. It is human nature to become psychologically dependent on our technology. So vitamin water, the drink brand vitamin water, in 2019, it held a contest and it promised to give $100,000 to one person if they gave up their smartphone for a full year. Vitamin Water picked a nice young woman. Her name is Elena Mugden. She was 29 years old at the time. She gave up her phone for a year. After the experiment, let's say, after the experiment concluded, Elena had an awful lot to say about her experience. She wrote an account for Inside Edition about her year, And she really focused on the mental health effects that she experienced. Elena said, and I quote, For a long time, I used my smartphone as a social crutch. It allowed me to handle my anxiety by focusing on the gadget and shutting out external stimuli. It was an enabling device that exacerbated the worst aspects of my depression, allowing me to sit in place or lie in bed for hours, mindlessly scrolling in an attempt to distract myself from the crushing weight of a deeply unhappy existence. End quote. I have linked to Elena's full interview in the show notes if you're interested. It is a fascinating read. You may not currently be experiencing a deeply unhappy existence as Elena was. However, if you've ever left home without your phone accidentally, 
and you experience the anxiety, the real severe at times anxiety that comes when you're without your phone, that psychological dependence on your phone is a real thing. And to make matters worse, most of us are psychologically dependent on our phones, of course, which then in turn makes us lonelier and more anxious because excessive smartphone use is related. Research has proven to be related to loneliness, stress, depression, and other negative emotions. So it's like a hamster wheel. You're depressed, lonely, and anxious, so you use your smartphone as a crutch. That smartphone, that excessive use of the smartphone, makes you more depressed, more lonely, more anxious. Hamster wheel. So remember, this is a show of threes. There are plenty of reasons why a minimalist phone may be right for you, but this is a show of threes. So the third and final reason that we're going to talk about today, why you may want to consider that minimalist smartphone, is that for many of us, maybe not all of us, but for many of us, myself included, our relationships with our loved ones are suffering. There is no other way to say this except to say that our smartphones prevent us from living real life in the moment. If you Google some phrase such as how to use my phone less or how to break my phone addiction, you will get dozens of tips. And the tips usually look like don't charge your phone near your bed or put your phone away when you get home and walk in the door. Put a hairband around your phone to remind you to use it less. Okay, good tips, solid tips. I've given them on this show plenty of times. But the problem is these are self-imposed limits that are so easy to break. For me personally, I try my darndest to not use my phone at the dinner table when I'm sitting down for our nightly dinners with my family. (laughs) And for the most part, I do an okay job with this. However, There are plenty of nights where I do not abide by my self-imposed rule, and that's because it's so easy for me to break my own rule. It's so easy for me to go in the other room and get my phone and check that one little thing and break that rule just this once. But then breaking that rule just this once becomes breaking this rule two times a week and then three times a week, and then here we are. Now, you may argue that the existence of social media has paved the way for connections and relationships and camaraderie that you wouldn't get if social media didn't exist. And I could say in some regards that, yes, that's right. Having my Instagram, let's say, connects me to like-minded people who care about eco-friendly living, sustainable minimalism, etc. However, I would argue that these are shallow relationships. They're surface-level relationships. I don't know anything about the people who I connect with, their real lives. I don't know them personally. I don't know them deeply. These are not real life, real deep, real meaningful connections, are they? Avoidance of real life interaction, that is a real thing. And there is a certain amount of emotional detachment that comes when we use technology to avoid face-to-face relationships. And if you've ever gone out to dinner with somebody and you felt frustrated when the person you're out to dinner with checks their phone real quick, you know that this is true. Technology can and technology does take us out of the real moment, out of real life. And so it's no surprise then that our real relationships suffer. So we're going to take our first of two ad breaks today. We will come back and we will talk about three benefits to the minimalist phone movement and specifically the wise phone in general after a quick word from our sponsor. Grocery shopping is the worst. Am I right? You have to drive to the store, deal with the crowds, and search through countless items on countless shelves to find specifically what you want. No thanks. Luckily, there is a better way, and the better way is Thrive Market. With Thrive Market, you can shop everything from healthy pantry staples to non-toxic cleaning supplies and everything in between, and Thrive delivers it straight to your door. The best part is if you find a lower price elsewhere, Thrive will match it. I use Thrive to stock up on pantry staples I rely on because their prices are always lower than the health food store near me. Siete chips, my absolute favorite snack, I only get them through Thrive Market. 
Join Thrive Market today and get up to $80 in free groceries. That's T-H-R-I-V-E market.com slash sustainable to get up to $80 in free groceries. Thrivemarket.com slash sustainable. Thrivemarket.com forward slash sustainable. Listeners, do you want the secret to better sleep? It's Etitude's clean bamboo bedding. I have sleep issues and they're not fun. But since I've started sleeping on Etitude's bamboo sheets, oh my gosh, I am not tossing or turning nearly as much. I'm still getting up with the five-year-old once a night, but that's a whole other story. These sheets feel unlike anything I've ever slept on, and right now you can get 20% off your first order at Etitude.com slash sustainable. Etitude's clean bamboo sheets have over 15,000 five-star reviews. They're better at regulating your body temperature, and they naturally wick moisture away. You can try any Etitude bedding risk-free for 30 nights. So if you decide they're not for you, you will get a full refund. Don't forget, you can get 20% off your order plus free shipping for a limited time when you visit etitude.com slash sustainable, E-T-T-I-T-U-D-E dot com slash sustainable. This is Etitude's best offer right now, so don't wait. Order today for free shipping and 20% off your order at etitude.com forward slash sustainable. And we are back. We are discussing the minimalist phone movement. We are also discussing the wise phone in particular. I'm here with three benefits to the minimalist phone. And all three benefits that I have for you are specific to the wise phone. Because remember, Angela's question referenced the wise phone, and this is a product review. So the first benefit that I see to the wise phone is that there is still plenty that you can do on this phone. Plenty. So if you're listening right now and you're saying to yourself, I cannot live without my phone map. It is my GPS when I'm driving around town. I can't go anywhere without that map. The wise phone still has that map. (laughs) If you're saying to yourself, but it's my camera. My smartphone is my camera. I need to take pictures of my kids and my phone is my camera. It still has a great camera. (laughs) The wise phone still allows texting and calculator, and weather, and timer, and clock, and stopwatch, and all the essential tools that you use on your phone that you rely on, but it blocks the distracting ones, like the social media apps. Now, I will say that the Wise Phone does not have all the essentials. I am a podcast host, and as of right this second, the Wise Phone does not have the capability for music or for podcast or for audiobooks. However, according to their website, WiseFone is in the process of creating an audio tool in the future. So that's important to me. Again, podcasts, hello. But there, it, this is a Google free phone. Google does not have access to any of your data. There's no app store of any kind on the WiseFone. You cannot download an app even if you wanted to. So benefit number one, there's plenty you can do on the phone. All your essentials are still on the wise phone, but the extras, the ancillaries, not on the wise phone. Benefit number two to the wise phone is it looks like a smartphone. It's not a flip phone. It doesn't look like it came out of 1999. And I do think this is important, especially if you're considering giving the wise phone to a teenager. There is a stigma associated with a dumb phone or a flip phone. And the wise phone does not carry that stigma. The wise phone looks like it belongs in 2022. Let's be honest, for teens and for adults, for everybody, a phone is a status symbol. The wise phone, what I like about it is that it is designed with minimalism in mind. There's no flashing emojis or bright colors or anything distracting. It's simple, it's clean, it's aesthetically pleasing. Benefit number three to the wise phone is that it is inexpensive, or at least it's relatively inexpensive, I should say. As of this recording, the Wise Phone has an MSRP of 399 US dollars. So you buy directly from the Techless website linked in the show notes. You will then still pay for your cell phone carrier each month. I should say that when I went through the purchasing pages on the website, the $399 really is more like $450 when you add in the shipping and handling and the taxes. So all in, let's say $450 plus the 
cell phone carrier fees that you're already paying each and every month. And I said that the Wise Phone is relatively cheap because if you look at the current and most updated smartphones on the market right now, $450, much cheaper. So the iPhone 13 Pro, $999. The Samsung Galaxy Z Fold, $1,400. The Samsung S22, $799. So are there cheaper phones on the market? Yes, there are. But when you compare the Wise Phone to the leading and latest smartphones on the market, Wise Phone is considerably cheaper. Now, I also need to mention their refund policy here because this is a big lifestyle adjustment, especially if you are like me and you've been using a smartphone for the last 15-ish years. If you are concerned, you want to buy it, you want to try it, but you aren't sure whether this big lifestyle change will be right for you, Wise Phone does offer a refund within 14 calendar days of the date you received your order. So you get the phone, you try it for up to 14 days, and if you decide it's not right for you, you can start the refund process and you will receive a full refund. Just to recap, the three benefits of the Wise Phone. There's still plenty that you can do on the phone. All your essentials are there. Benefit two, it looks like a smartphone. And benefit three, it is relatively inexpensive. All right, we're going to take our second and final ad break, and then we will come back with what I see are the three drawbacks to the minimalist phone movement. Listen up, tablet users. Since the pandemic, we've all experienced transitions in our digital lives. Many of us these days are working and managing our personal lives digitally. WeBudding is here to help us transition from paper products to digital ones, and that's because WeBudding is an online marketplace where you can find the perfect digital calendar, planner, journal, and more to suit your needs. With more than 10,000 products created by talented artists, WeBudding is the largest digital stationary marketplace in the world. Last year alone, WeBudding users saved more than 3.7 tons of paper. Now it's your turn. Live organized and save some trees. Head to en.webudding.com slash sustainable for up to 50% off. That's en.webudding.com slash sustainable with promo code sustainable. And we are back again. We are on to three drawbacks, in my humble opinion, with the minimalist phone movement. My three drawbacks for you, one is wise phone specific, and two are minimalist phone in general. So the first one is wise phone specific. The number one drawback to the wise phone is that it is not currently compatible with all service providers. I am a Verizon user, and when Angela wrote to me about doing this product review for the Wise Phone, I was so excited because I have a problem, (laughs) a real problem using my phone too much, and I was so excited to try this product and hopefully integrate it into my life. However, Wise Phone is not currently compatible with Verizon. So if you are a happy Verizon customer and you don't want to switch service providers, The Wise Phone is not currently accessible to you at this time. Now, I should say, I did speak with a very nice lady over at Techless. Her name is Amy. Hi, Amy. Amy broke this down for me. Why does the Wise Phone not work with America's largest cell phone service provider? Due to a recent update, Verizon no longer supports the technology that Wise Phone operates They operate on the CDMA network, and that's not compatible with Wise OS. Verizon has shared with Techless, the company that makes the Wise Phone, that they plan on switching over to the GSM network, which is, by the way, Wise Phone compatible, by the end of the year. So in December of 2022, four-ish months from this recording. And so once they do, it is highly possible that Verizon will be a compatible carrier, but not now. The Wise Phone does currently work best with AT&T, T-Mobile, Cricket, and Patriot. I don't, I've never even heard of Cricket and Patriot, by the way. But anyway, so AT&T, T-Mobile, Cricket, Patriot, you can get the Wise Phone. 
Similarly, if you are an international listener, the Wise Phone may work with your provider, but Wise Phone does not currently ship internationally. So you're out for the Wise Phone. Now we're on to drawback number two. And this is about minimalist phones or dumb phones in general. And that is, the drawback is that using such a device requires an intentional sacrifice not all of us may be able to make. So let's say that a simpler way. There is a privilege issue here. (laughs) Should have just said it that way from the beginning. (laughs) I read an interview with the founder of Techless, and he made a point saying that they have an interesting data point, which is that the more money people make, the more interested they are in investing in a minimalist phone. People making more than $100,000 a year are much more interested in the Wise Phone and other such devices than people who live at or below the poverty line. So to me, as somebody who read that, that tells me that there is a major privilege issue here. It's the same with fast food, right? We know that excessive technology, we know that fast food isn't good for us, and we need some self-discipline to stay away from it. But for some of us, Fast food is what's accessible. Fast food is all there is. And same for some of us who don't make over $100,000 a year. Perhaps they need the smartphone to go to their job, let's say. A potential privilege issue here definitely is employment. If your employer mandates that you have a smartphone to fully execute all the requirements associated with your job description you may not be able to have a minimalist phone and keep your job. So there is a privilege issue here, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention it. Third and final drawback that I see with minimalist phones in general, smartphones are in many ways necessary to participate in today's economy. Now, what on earth am I talking about? Have you ever been to a sporting event in which you had to present your ticket via the smartphone app? Yep, I have. Has your child, maybe your child's in high school, have they ever needed a specific app on their phone to do their homework assignments? Oh my goodness, how about this one? Have you ever had to download an airline app to access your airplane ticket? That, by the way, is baloney. Anytime you need to download an app to access a ticket that you paid for, baloney. We're talking about airlines, but it's any industry that makes you download an app. So let's talk about airlines. Airlines want you to download their app so they can further infiltrate your life, so they can access that data, so they can send you push notifications, et cetera, et cetera. It benefits the airline when you download their app. It does not benefit you. So I would say that if you need to have a smartphone to do X, Y, or Z, to get into such and such sporting event, to get on the airplane by which you've paid for your ticket, that is something we need to challenge as a community of sustainable minimalists. Just because that's the way it currently is does not mean that is the way it has to stay. So if you're unhappy with that policy, if you experience that policy sometime in the near future... I suggest you use your voice and you speak up about it because that is baloney. There should be a space that exists in this world for those of us who do not want and do not choose to opt in to the smartphone way of life. So the final word for today's episode, the wise phone, any minimalist or dumb phone in particular, those phones are perfect for two types of people. The first type of person is for those of us who are concerned with the dangers associated with too much technology. That's person number one. The second type of person is for kids or teenagers. We want to protect our kids. A minimalist phone is likely right for them. When deciding whether a minimalist phone is right for you or right for your child, I suggest you consider weighing the long-term and less tangible benefits with the short-term but very tangible benefits. So what am I talking about? A long-term but less tangible benefit is the fact that you will live more present in the present moment. You will very likely live a deeper and more meaningful existence without a smartphone. That's quite likely. But that is a less tangible benefit. A short-term but tangible benefit would be that you have access to Instagram when you're away from home. Short-term. Very tangible, but again, short-term. 
So weigh those long-term benefits with the short-term and see which one comes out on top for you personally, right? What's best for you may not be best for me and vice versa. It's a personal and individual choice. But I will say, final word number two, is that people who have successfully given up their smartphones say time and time again that giving up that smartphone is empowering, it's freeing, it improves their productivity, and it improves their mental health. Phew, who knew I had so much to say on smartphones? Show notes at Mama Minimalist dot com forward slash 292. I will see you on Tuesday. Next week, we have two great shows. Next week, we are talking about practical pantry decluttering. That's on Tuesday. And on Thursday, we are talking all things trash bags. Another listener question that I am so excited to answer. If you've ever wondered what the difference between biodegradable and compostable is, we're going to get into that in the trash bag issue. I will see you next week reach out if you need me. I love, I appreciate, I care for each and every one of you. Have a great weekend and take care.